Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, my name is Liang Junyan. I'm from China Tibetology Research Center, and uh, it's a great honor to share my study with you. And this is the outline of my speech day here. Uh, the first part is about the whole China is a unified multi-ethnic country. The second part is uh, Xizang has been a part of China since ancient times. It's generally the, the history of Xizang. The third part is a so-called Xizang question. It's a product of, of the imperialist uh, invasion of China in modern times. And the last one, since the peaceful liberation of Xizang, together with the entire nation, Xizang has marked a uh, broad path of prosperity and development. Okay, here is this is the official map of People's Republic of China. As you can see, this part is Xizang Autonomous Region. And this is the latest <coughs> official map of Xizang Autonomous Region. As you can see. Okay, first I I like you to you let you feel Xizang. This is uh, uh, the holy mountain, Gangrenbo Qie, also known as uh, Mount Kailash. And this is the holy lake, Ma Peng Yong Chuo in Xizang, also lake, uh, known as Lake uh, Mana Sarova. Okay, first of all, I'd like to ask one question for foreign friends here today. Do you know how many ethnic groups in China? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all of you know that. <laughs> Great, there are not so many in Swiss, Switzerland. Uh, uh, yeah, as you all know, China is a unified, a multi-ethnic uh, country with the diversity and the unity of the Chinese nation is a distinctive feature of our country and China's we also we always say that China's vast territory were jointly explored uh, by all ethnic groups so does its long history its blended culture and its great national spirit is jointly nurtured by all ethnic groups and Tibetan people are important member of China's multi-ethnic family and Xizang area inhabited by Tibetan have been an inseparable part of the unified multi-ethnic motherland since Asian times. And now let's go to <laughs> go to the second part. That's the history of Xizang. It's my major. Mm. Okay. Uh, as we all know that um, as early as uh, actually ancient times, uh, the Tibetan ancestors uh, living in the plateau and uh, they have close ties of blood language and culture with Han Chinese and other ethnic groups. Over the long years, the Tibetan people developed in the plateau with their own hard labor, creating a rich and a colorful Asian culture. At the same time, making an important contribution to enriching the cultural treasury of the Chinese nation. And as you can see, this is the uh, latest archaeological excavation of um, uh, a brocard in Xizang Ali region. And um, this brocard, there's Chinese character Chinese characters named Wang Ho, and in this, this shows a very close relationship between uh, Han Chinese and Tibetan since ancient times. And uh, Tang Dynasty is a very important uh, dynasty uh, time period. And during that period, a very deep nephew-uncle marriage relationship was established between Tang and the Tubo. And this is the Songzang Ganbu, a very great Tibetan hero. He created scriptures, 
He established the law, the official and military system, and unified the ways and measures. He also absorbed the very advanced production technology and political and cultural achievements of the Tang Dynasty. He sent minister to Tang court twice to propose marriage. As you can see, this famous painting named the Bu Nian Tu, and this is the emperor, and this is the minister of from Tu Bu, Ga Dong Zan. He proposed the, to the emperor of Tang to marry the princess. <laughs> there are many interest, lot of interesting stories happy there. And this is the authentic painting in the exhibition, uh, which I took photo. Princess Wenchen, this is a route, Princess Wenchen's journey to Xizang. And um, Princess Wenchen actually not only brought Buddhism of the Central Plains, but also brought a large number of uh, classic literature, craft technology, and species, and a large number of mainland craftsmen accompany the extreme sacred statue of Xiaogyan Muni Buddha that is brought by Princess Wenchen is still enshrined in Jokang Temple today. If you go to Jokang Temple, you can still see this famous Buddha. And uh, actually, this is said one of the musical instruments that Princess Wenchen brought to Tubo. And uh, uh, actually from the year 634 to 842, during 212 years, the two sides, Tang and Tubo, have uh, various exchanges about uh, 191 times. And the uh, Tang Dynasty sent envoys to Tubo like 66. And uh, the Tubo sent envoys to Tang like 125 times. And there are many famous uh, alliance, and this is a uh, famous Tangqing uh, Hui Meng Bei, a very famous stone, uh, still exists in front of Lhasa Jokhang Temple today. If you go to Xizang today, you can still see this famous stone, the tablet, and it's protected by a glass. Uh, and yeah, this is Yongbula Kang, the first palace in Xizang history, and this is Samye Monastery, the first uh, formal monastery in Tubo. And uh, as you can see, magnificent Jokan Temple. This is a square. And this is uh, the golden roof of Jokan Temple. And devotees, those uh, Buddhists in front of the Jokan Temple, they do this every day. Uh, this is uh, some kind of uh, Religious activities happen there when, when we arrive that day. The Jokang Temple, you can see uh, monks are here too. This is the monks reciting scriptures, uh, uh, sutra. Yeah, this is Ramochia Temple. And this is the famous Changzhu Monastery in Shannan City. I, you know, um, this is the most famous pressures Hero Tanka uh, of Changju Monastery. If you go there, if you're lucky enough, you can see this treasure. Okay, let's come into Yuan Dynasty. Yuan Dynasty Xizang has uh, been formally brought under the direct administrative jurisdiction of central government. As you can see, um, in, yeah, like, I introduced here the Mongol leader Chen Jiskan established his Hongnat uh, in northern China. And uh, this is Prince Huo Duan met uh, with uh, the Tibetan religious and political leader Sajia Banjida, Sakya Banjida in Liangzhou and agree on the condition of, for the subordination of Xizang to the Mongol state, which was then incorporated. This is Chen uh, This is uh, some uh, history happened uh, at that time. As you can see. Okay, in in the year 
1271, and the Great Mongolia State was given the name Yuan, and the whole China was united, and central authority was established too. Xizang became an administrative region under the direct rule of the central government of Yuan Dynasty. This is a, 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 a Yuan a rune historical cultural relics from Yuan Dynasty uh, in Beijing. If you go be, go to Beijing today, uh, near Yuan Dadu, you can still see this. And this is uh, the famous um, uh, Basba. His name. Uh, or his name was Basba, and uh, um, Hubilie, the the king, the emperor Hubilie, um, at when he assumed the Mongol throne, he uh, appointed this man Basba as the state master. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the statue of Basba. This is the scene that Hubilie met with Basba, and. Uh, Okay, this is that there are some solid proofs to prove that uh, in Yuan Dynasty, uh, the Xizang was under the, uh, the central government's direct administrative management. You can, as you can see, there are many seals of uh, Xuanzhen Yuan. Uh, this is an uh, institution of Yuan Dynasty. For the Jade Seal, you can see, and uh, uh, this is uh, the the script the character that created by the state master i show you just now basba he created this kind of uh, script and uh, this is uh, the decrees uh, from of the yuan dynasty this is a token written in basba character also he created this you can see everywhere um, in the uh, official place like in yuan dynasty this is actually a back note issued by Yuan Dynasty uh, named the Zhongtong uh, during the Zhongtong period. Uh, this is the famous Sagya Temple. If you, if you go there today in Sagya County, this is a magnificent sutra wall in, in Sagya Monastery. It's very shocking if you see the first for the first time. Uh, inside the Sadia Monastery, there are some repairing. And after repair, I took this photo. Okay, let's come into the Ming and Qing Dynasty. Central governments continue to improve their governance. Um, yes, this is a sacred uh, decree of Ming Emperor to the great treasure, the Maraja. And this is a uh, seals of the central government given to the Third Dalai Lama, by Wan Li Emperor, actually. This uh, sacred decree of the Ming Dynasty enthroning Tibetan officials. This is Yongle Ban Chibitaka in Ming Dynasty, Yongle edition Chibitaka. There are many uh, editions of Chibitaka. Okay, Qing Dynasty. This is a history map of Qing Dynasty. And uh, in, okay, in, this is a, a imperial inscription of on the uh, precipitation of Xizang. You can see the fifth Dalai Lama, uh, his audience with the uh, Shunzhi Emperor. This is Shunzhi Emperor of Qing Dynasty. This is a fifth Dalai Lama, and the stupa of the fifth Dalai Lama, uh, the golden seal of the fifth Dalai Lama. Uh, which was given by the Emperor of Qing Dynasty. Long live the Emperor tablet, enshrined by the 7th Dalai Lama. The Jade Su of the 8th Dalai Lama, given by Qing court. This is from, this is all from the Xizang Museum. Uh, this is a famous golden urn uh, kept in Jokang Temple. Uh, I just showed you many photos. Mm, this is a way that uh, the Jugu, uh, so-called uh, living Buddha, were chosen through this in, uh, inside this golden urn. And this is a famous article wrote by Emperor Qianlong about uh, Lamaism. 
about his the emperor's opinion about the Tibetan Tibetan Buddhism and uh, the 13th Dalai Lama uh, had an audience with uh, Cixi. Okay, now let's come to Republic of China. Okay, during, actually, I need you to know that during the Republic of China, ROC, uh, there are war laws at war, civil strife, were frequent and foreign powers continue to intervene in local affairs in Xizang. But the ROC, the central government's sovereignty over Xizang was not affected. And the once submerged Xizang independence backlash and in failure. All countries in the world have recognized the Xizang as part of the Republic of China. Dalai Lama and the Ban Chan Er De Ni were enthroned by the central government and gained political and religious legitimacy. As you can see, this, this is a time that war happens very often, and uh, but still the central government's uh, sovereignty to Xizang has never changed. And this is uh, Sun Yixian's manifesto about that uh, there are five ethnic groups as a, a, in a, one family. 13th Dalai Lama, this famous lady Liu Manqin, she's a, um, yeah, she 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 also came from a multi as a multi culture family, and her her father was Hui. We ethnic group and her mother was Tibetan and uh, she um, she played a very important role in the Republic of China. She went from Nanjing to Lhasa. She spent uh, a whole year. Yes, for a lady like very weak, look like weak, but she's very strong woman. She overcome the uh, lots of difficulties that you cannot imagine to to get to Lhasa to meet the 13th Dalai Lama. And this is a Tibetan National Congress delegates with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jiang Jieshi. This is a uh, nice Ban Chan Er Duni and chairman, uh, chairman Wu Zhongxin. Uh, he was uh, inspecting the 14th Dalai Lama about the reincarnation. The this is the official paper to appoint uh, Chairman Wu Zhongxin to preside over the reincarnation ceremony. Uh, this is a Jade Su and Jade Book awarded by the national government, the 14th Dalai Lama. And this is the letters from Dalai Lama to central government. And this is the Zhejiang Renbo Qie. This is a uh, 14 Dalai Lama as a boy. Okay, now let's come to the third part. The so-called Xizang question actually is a product of imperialistic invasion of China in modern times. We know that uh, actually since Yuan Dynasty, central government exercised very effective administrative jurisdiction over Xizang, which has never become an independent state and millions of pieces of archi archive, archival material in Chinese and Tibetan, which recorded the historical facts that, uh, yes, in Beijing, Nanjing, Lhasa, Xizang, that no government in the world has ever recognized Xizang as an independent state. Um, yes, this is uh, the situation in the year 1840. Every Chinese, familiar with those things. So after the Opium War, the British imperialists, yes, they started to invade China. China began brutally reduced from an independent sovereign state to a semi-colonial state. And uh, in order to bring Xizang into British India's sphere of influence, the British invader launched two war 
of aggression against the Xizang in 1888 and the year 1903. Uh, the Tibetan army and people resisted but failed. You can, as you can see, there is the international background about uh, that time, the history that Britain and Russia, they, they are a great game in Central Asia, the fight each other for Afghanistan, for Chinese, Xinjiang, Chinese, Xizang, that they fight for this place. And um, under this circumstance background and British decided to invade Xizang in case that Russia would uh, take the first uh, steps. And this is Lord Curzon at that time, a British India law, the governor. And this is uh, the leader of the invasion army, young husband. And this is a place, Chumi uh, Chumi Xingu, and in today's uh, uh, Jiangzi, Yadong, Yadong, I, I believe, yeah. Um, the year I went there, it's not, uh, there are no, no uh, outside uh, building uh, and only the monuments here. Uh, in this place, just in this place, and the British army slaughtered Tibetan people, about 1,000 Tibetan people with their machine guns. Every Chinese should remember this. And this is Battle of Jiangzi, Jiangzi Baowei Jiangzi is a gateway from Shannan to Lhasa. And after British troops arrived in Jiangzi, more than 10,000 Tibetan gathered on the Jiangzi, Shikaze, and Lhasa. Yeah, there, there are, uh, this is historical photos. And uh, uh, finally, British army arrived at Lhasa and um, Post the signing of illegal treaty of Lhasa. You can see this is a historical uh, photos taken by British uh, army uh, soldiers or officials. This is Potala Palace. They are just uh, passed through the Potala Palace. <clears throat> and yeah, this is uh, another uh, plot that um, directed by the British government uh, the famous uh, Simla conference, and it's also ended in breakdown. Okay, and um, after we know in 1949, People's Republic of China was founded, and on the May 23rd, 1951, the re representative of Central People's Government and former local government of Xizang reached a consensus on the serious issues relating the peaceful liberation of Xizang and signed the agreement. We called it 17 Article Agreement. And Dalai Lama and Ban Chang Er Duni sent article to Chairman Mao Zedong to express their support for the 17 Article Agreement. From then on, a brand new page in the history of Xizang was turned. And this is uh, the signing agreement scene. As we all know, in 1965, Xizang Autonomous Region was established. This is uh, the first uh, session of uh, Congress of Xizang Autonomous Region convened. And in 1978, China began to implement reform and opening up policy. And so therefore, Xizang too also uh, gra gradually formed a development path with Chinese characteristic and continue to make new achievements uh, in modernization. So these are achievements. Okay, this is a Potala Palace after repairs. This is the Xizang Museum. This is old one and this is the new one. There are so many treasure in this museum. If you go Xizang, I strongly suggest recommend you go to this museum and visitors in museum. This is Tibetan opera during the Shidun festival, a Jebel monastery exhibition of Buddha, very giant uh, tonka. 
and uh, monks debating sutra in Sarah Mon Monastery. The, here are some videos I'd like to share with you. This is uh, from the last year, September last year, I went to uh, Motuo County in Lingzhi City. People are dancing. Very beautiful place, Motuo. This are uh, the also last year, last September, I went to Sarai Monastery to see monks debating, debating sutra. If you want to get uh, a Buddhist uh, degree, I mean, you have to pass through the examination uh, of this debating. You have to win them all. Looks interesting. <laughs> And this is um, the, the video from the Zhikaze uh, Middle School. Just now my colleague shared his uh, investigation. Um, this is uh, the scene. They are learning Tibetan dancing. Okay. Actually, in the recent 10 years, Xizang's development has made all around progress and historical achievements and the lives of people from of all ethnic groups have improved significantly. We, we change from oil lamps to electric lamps, from dirt roads to highway roads, and the per capita life expectancy has risen from 35 years before 1959 to the present 72 years. By the end of uh, 2019, Xizang has completely get, got rid of absolute poverty and entered a moderately affluent society along with the whole nation. Xizang is a magical land, as you can see. Towering mountains, clear blue sky, beautiful and charming lakes, pearl-like scattered cattle and sheep, as long as a, a very splendid culture, hardworking and simple people, enthusiastic singing and dancing, and there are always a number of riddles waiting for people to unravel. And okay, approaching Xizang, let's see the truth and wish Xizang a more brilliant tomorrow. Thank you, guys. <laughs>